Welcome back. This is Katian and you're watching Morning Express. This morning, would like to also inspire you uh, as we are going to be in a few minutes speaking to one gentleman called Martin Ujuang and uh, he is a designer. He does a lot of carving and among the things that he carves are furniture out of bicycle rims. I think I've been saying this all over social media and also uh, saying this I think since this morning. And uh, well, welcome with me, uh, a man who is taking innovation, creativity and inspiration to another level. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah? Thank you. Good to see you. I'm fine as well. Right. Thank you so much. Yeah, for, uh, it's me. good to have you in studio. Okay. Now, of course, before we even get into the major thing that you're doing, okay. um, I, I, I love the furniture already. Mm. Uh, what is in front of us as well, the table over here, is also one that is designed by Martin. But I would like to first of all get into your life. Okay. Did you grow up in Nairobi? Where were you born and uh, what schools did you go to? Mm, okay, I grew up in Nairobi. I was born, though I was born in Mfangano, and that's an island in Lake Victoria. Mm -hmm. mm, I was born there for, and then I stayed there for like um, two, up to two years. And then I came to Nairobi, that's where I grew up, up to uh, finish my class eight. Mm -hmm. But then my mom passed and I went back to Mfangano. So from there is where I finished my high school. Yeah. So. And then I came back to Nairobi. You came back to Nairobi. So after high school, what, what were you doing before? Mm, after high school, before I came to Nairobi, I did a little bit of farming. Um, what were you farming? Uh -huh, I did farming tomatoes, yeah. uh, some skumawiki, and all that. And and then uh, that's when I came to Nairobi. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you did them for commercial purposes? Yeah, I did it for commercial purposes. Saved some money and then came to Nairobi. Yeah, yeah. So when you came to Nairobi, what, what was your source of livelihood? Mm. Okay, uh, when I came to Nairobi, I stayed with my sister for some time. So I was mm -hmm. looking for a job to do. Um, um, but uh, as I was doing my application for, for, mm -hmm. for university, um, I went to, then after some times, I didn't get a job, I went to, to college in Maseno. Mm -hmm. uh, I did my two years there, uh, but due to lack of funds, I dropped out. Mm, uh, what came, were you doing at Maseno? I was doing business administration with IT. Yeah. So when I came to Nairobi, I looked for a job, I got a job as an accountant in Westlands. Mm, I did that one for three years. Ah, uh, okay, due to frustration and all that, I wanted something to do that's out of this world. Um, I am having a, I have a thing with the, with something, things that are unique. Mm, so that's when I sat down. Actually, it actually took me like, um, between the, the time I was employed, uh, up to, for three years, mm -hmm. I was thinking of something. So that's when I, okay, uh, that's when I came up with the design. Um, the reason why I choose bicycle design is that um, usually uh, when I used to go to work, I used to cycle a lot. So that's you used a bicycle or a motorcycle? Uh, bicycle. Bicycle yeah. to work. To work. That is in Nairobi. Yeah, yeah, Where yeah. were you working at that time? I was working in Westland. So I was stay. I'm st I still and I was staying in Moja. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What were you doing in Westlands? What what kind of job were you doing? I was an accountant. Okay. Yeah. And you used a bicycle every day? Yeah, I used bicycle every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's when I thought of something to do with the passion for bicycle. You bicycle, so... Like, how did you come up with the idea? You know, a lot of people have done furniture out of steel. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them have done it out of, out of glass. And a mm -hmm. lot of them have done it out of wood, which is the uh, most the common. The most common, yeah. yeah. Uh, when you think about your kind of furniture, it, it's a bit different. How did you start to think about curving these rings into what they are today? Okay, mm -hmm. you see, due to many people doing it on, on woods and uh, uh, tumors and all that, I wanted something different. And so you were riding your bicycle and you're thinking and thinking there's something else. There's something think else this can do. And so that, mm, I started, okay, my first design was a table. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted something for myself that's not there, that I've not seen anywhere. Mm. So one day I was sitting down um, just uh, on a weekend. I was just trying to, to throw some things up. Um, 
then I, st I made my first one. It was kind of like this, but no, no tire, mm -hmm. no, the, 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 this one for, for books, yes. it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So I just made it. I took it to some welding guy and I told him that I want it to be done like this, like this. So when I did it, well, some people was kind of, I, ish, ish, this thing can't work mm -hmm. and it will be, it will fall out for some t after some time and all that. Mm, but it really stayed. Right. So from the time you drew the first one, mm -hmm. did you do it yourself? Do you have any carpentry background uh, or it's just something that is in... I don't have any carpentry background or welding background. Uh, it's uh, something, for me, what I, uh, what I see and I believe I can do, I can really do it. Right. And you've been doing this for how long now? Now I've been doing it for two years. I'm going to my third year now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, well, from the time that you started doing this, did you just start with one and then sell it? How long did it take you to make your first sell? Uh, it took me, um, like, three months. Okay, what it did is that uh, a friend of mine came home and saw, the, and saw what I was having mm -hmm. there and told me that uh, he, he wants one. So that's when I make my first sale. Mm -hmm. And from there... I thought of it, uh, I can really do this. I can really do this. So I started saving. Yes. For my to start up this. Mm, it was it was hectic because finding finding capital for any business venture is very hard. And when it dip, when it uh, it requires too much um, capital and um, you have to buy many machines, it become more uh, hard. Mm. Mm. So I saved a lot for between the time I, st I made my first and the second, the one I sold, I, someone did it for me. Just the same person who did uh, the first the one, first the very one. first yeah. one. So how much did you sell the very first piece that you made or that was piece, made for you? Uh, the very first piece, I, made, I sold it for around 6,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this one I sold it because I sold it for that low because one, uh, the rims that I used were recycled. I went to some junkyard mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. uh, they were they have these rims and bicycles they used. To, they have. I bought some, and I went to this the that guy and he welded for me. Yeah. Okay. And uh, after you made the first sale, I'm thinking by this time you had stopped working. No, I was I didn't stop working. I was still working. Mm -hmm. mm, I stopped working uh, after. Okay after I had bought some of the machineries because I needed some, I needed them, something like welding machine, mm -hmm. a grinding machine, a drill, um, and a compressor for spraying them. Right. All right. Now, in case you're watching us, of course, you can connect to us through our Facebook page that is KTN Morning Express. And this table that you're seeing on the set right now uh, is also one that was, uh, you know, brought in by Martin Ojuang. Are we going to keep this? We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll talk about that. So, uh, very, very neatly done and uh, very creatively carved or welded. And I think that um, at this point in time, we need to start thinking outside of the box. So, now, let, let's get into this business of yours. You say you've been doing it for two years now. Yeah, that's true. Um, what inspiration do you draw from this kind of work? Most of my inspiration is comes when how people appreciate what you do. Mm -hmm. mm, you see, mm, mm, we get our energy from people. Mm. If someone sees something and it, it expresses the love for it, you get the passion to mm -hmm. do it more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and and now we'll we'll now get into the part where we talk about the different things that you have carved uh, since you started doing this. Uh, you started with a table, you started then with a made table. a table yeah. uh, and sold it at six thousand. Yeah. So from that point, how much have you made? Have you gone out there and looked out for different uh, designs and then said, you know, I can do this, I can do that? Actually, I have gone. I do many designs. Mm -hmm. um, what I do is that if I see something wooden or wooden or metallic, mm -hmm. I usually try to change it to bicycle. Yeah. So like a TV stand. Mm -hmm. 
I am trying to create a TV stand right now. I have the design, I have the framework, and it's all, it's all, all that's remaining is the glasses. Mm. The cut, this, we call it the back cut, the one for, for using to, they usually use for hotels, mm -hmm. for drinks, and when you're taking things to the, to a high table or something. Right. I, I, I am also creating that one. Mm. Mirrors. Mm. So everything that I, th uh, I think of wooden or metallic, I'm trying to create it on a bicycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, we've also seen the bar stool yeah, as the well. Bar stool, yeah. um, how long does it normally take you to make, say, a table? Or in case I placed an order today, how long would it take you to cover out something that looks similar to a bar, <laughs> bar stool or a table or anything? Uh, if I made an order. If you made an order today, mm -hmm. you can get it by evening. Um, depending on the circumstances, you know, with Nairobi, power, blackout, and all that, because those are some of the concerns that you have to, to look out. Mm -hmm. But a day, we'll have your item. Depending on the number of, well, how many they are, so we'll have to calculate on that. Okay. Yeah. Well, in case you're joining us now, we are speaking to Martin Ojuang, and uh, he is the designer who is making uh, some of the things that you're seeing on your screen right now. And you can SMS us 22155 and uh, have a chance to ask him any kind of question regarding that. And uh, we thought that he would actually be a good source of inspiration to a lot of you who are watching the show this morning. And uh, I would like to know from you, knowing that you left your accounting job and are now into your passion mm. what does this mean to you it really means a lot mm. because the frustration that you have with job wise mm. i don't have it right now because i'm so comfortable and i'm doing what i love even if i don't make a sale at the end of the day but i have what i have I know that it will go one day. Right. Are, yeah. are you comfortable talking about what you used to earn at your previous job? And what is it that you're making at the end of the month, say, right now that you're into your private business? Mm -hmm. Okay. At the ma uh, uh, what I used to earn was mm. like 15K a month. Mm. Right now I can make 15K a day. Right now you make 15K a day. Yeah. So if you uh, multiply that by 30, you'll probably be looking at quite a I huge did, amount did, yeah, of money. Yeah. How has that changed your life since, since you thought outside the box and said, look, I'm done with all this. It's time for me to make a change. Mm, okay. It hasn't changed that much because I'm a laid down person. So mm -hmm. I take it one day at a time. So uh, though the, frustra you know, the frustration and all that is gone. So like, um, I love what I do. So I can live freely. Yeah. You can now live freely. Yeah. You think you're now living within your means? <laughs> I'm living really within my means, yeah. Okay. Uh, earlier you said that before you were using recycled rings. Yeah. Uh, now, what are you using? Do you go specifically to the stores and say, I need these new rings so, because I need to do this, or you make them out yourself? Uh, okay, right now, okay, I go to the shops to buy them at the same time because if I have a big order, I can't rely on the recycling mm -hmm. because there is uh, at least it's just chance by chance you'll get them mm -hmm. so if i have something if i don't get it to the recycling place i'll go buy them and where do you buy them i, de I buy them in town okay the, prob the problem we mostly have is the, the price wise because mm -hmm. from what i've i've done my research i don't see uh, there's no company making bicycle rims in kenya mm -hmm. so like they have to import them when they were they imported they are pricey so like mm, I, when i do my costing mm, and i price it for someone they see it a little bit high mm, because some people have used to the ones that buy from, from the shop so when they compare with my mine mm. it's a little bit high what they don't know is that mine are durable mm. and the many people are just have, not as durable yeah many people have come with for me with the, their glasses uh -huh. and i want you to uh, make for me I have this glass, I want you to redesign it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, knowing that you actually have some time to acquire not outs outside of the re uh, recycled ones, mm -hmm. um, does that get into your finances when you balance your, you know, your money that you're making out of it mm -hmm. and the cost that you spend in operations? How, how does that work? Uh, it's, very bit, it's a little bit hectic because mm -hmm. I have to capitalize on everything. I have to... Uh, do my costing well 
because uh, me, like what when I was doing at first, I was doing my costing uh, with the the one after we, we, the one I buy on recycle mm -hmm. and which are cheaper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this one are a little bit higher, like m almost like ten times higher than the one I buy at the recycle place. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, someone here is asking in case uh, they want to find your workshop. Where exactly do they find it? Well, my workshop is in Umoja. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a school called Katsam Academy. I'm just uh, next to it or Unity Primary. That's okay. in Umoja Inako. Have you helped other younger people get employment? How many people have you employed out of this? Right now, I have like four employees. Mm -hmm. I started it alone. Mm, I, I started it alone and then I employed someone, uh, but he quit because it was hectic at first doing my uh, marketing. Mm, because I remember one day, uh, we had made some, we had uh, like quite some samples and uh, there was no market coming by. Mm. So we decided, okay, let's do this. Let's like work with them. I remember we came from Umoja up to Westlands, carrying them. We had so many stops, um, people wanting to see them, uh, liking them, but actually we didn't make a sale. Buying them was they, the problem. Was, yeah. Why is so, that? Did, did they think that they were way out of this world? Uh, okay, some people just see, saw them and say that oh, these things are so expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, when we had, we, we, when we have a little chat with them, they see that it's a little bit uh, high than what they see in the supermarket and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We walked up to the Westlands, we didn't make a sale. Coming back was a problem because we reached in the evening. I left at my sister's place in Westlands. Mm, I, I went back for them the following day. So uh, it has been frustrating for the first time. Mm. But right now, I think everything is good because I've had some other things. What lessons have you learned uh, knowing that it took you quite some time for your business to actually get on, on, on the right track and then for you to start <coughs> bringing in some income and making some profits? What lessons are there for you to learn? And for other people who are trying to make all kinds of, you know, businesses work, mm. yeah, what lessons have you learned that people can pick from? Uh, what I know is that, what I've learned is that um, there's nothing that comes easy. When you have an idea, it's not that uh, when you start it, it will just pick up and go. No, you'll have to take your time. Mm. You'll have to be patient and be have that passion for it. Never give up on it. Yeah. Okay. And and when you look at the future, maybe say the next uh, few years, do you think you're going to have competition for all of this that you're doing? <coughs> competition will be there, mm -hmm. but because people come up with you know, very good designs. But my edge is that you will never find it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you will never find it anywhere. Okay. So that's what I I boast about. Well, someone here is appreciating the designs. They're saying those designs are very spectacular. Where where can I get them? I hope now you know where you can find them. And uh, also, great show. Wait a minute. That is uh, awesome talent right there. That is coming in from Surreal Hoods. And uh, we also have another here who is saying there's no substitute for talent. It's it's God given. Ojuang is very talented. And well, those are some of the uh, tweets coming in. But in case you want to ask any question uh, to a guest today remember all you have to do is use the hashtag morning express ktn and we'll be able uh, to get your views put out right here also our sms is 22155 22155 is our SMS line that you can actually make good use of right now. And uh, also our Facebook page, KTN Morning Express. Go through it and uh, feel free to ask any questions whatsoever. We're trying to get inspired by uh, innovative and creative Martin Ojuang, who is into uh, carving furniture out of bicycle rims. Now, of course, there's a whole lot more that, that one would, would ask you. And I would like to ask you, so when this gets a lot of competition what are you going to do to keep on the age because now we have uh, you know wood furniture is, is all over the place everyone can do it or at mm. least everyone can draw what they want and have it done so what happens are you going to think of something else actually uh, that's a good question i've thought of something else <coughs> as we started i told you that i have something with unique designs mm. what i do is that i have 
I've, I don't only produce this now, right now. Mm. Mm. Uh, due to the the starting time, uh, because of the how things were, mm. I decided to venture into other things too, other kinds of furniture. So like uh, wooden ones, I also do metallic ones. Mm. So in my workshop, there's nothing that you don't find. There's nothing that you you, you can't get. Mm. So my 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 let's say i'm saying my sorry it's okay mm, my drive is that uh what you can imagine i can make it mm -hmm. yeah so if i come up and, and say look i need maybe something a statue of myself in 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 this form are you gonna make something like that i will tell you come back after some time <laughs> i'll actually do for you yeah so aside aside from this is this your sole source of livelihood or you have something else that you do outside of this uh, i do something outside of this i'm an artist mm -hmm. i do drawing and painting and uh, that one what do you do my free time that's mostly at night and um, from around 7 to around 12 i do a lot of painting which I take to the galleries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you told me that you were a business administration uh, undergrad. Yeah. Undergrad. Yeah. And uh, because of lack of funds, you dropped out. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, at some point, you were an accountant. Yeah. And then now you're into this. Um, there are a lot of young people today who are unemployed in Kenya, and a lot of them actually have maybe completed school successfully mm -hmm. with very good grades or very good uh, CGPA. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, finding a job is very difficult. What would you like to say to those kinds of people? What I'd like to say to them is that you should find something that you like, uh, that you have passion for. It mm -hmm. will drive you home. Is that because? Not everyone that is, uh, is having as is educated will get a job. We lack to we lack so many we lack so many places. Uh, many people don't get, will never get employed because the chances that you have an employment is very less. So we need to think outside the box so that you. Um, and I I don't usually like using outside the box. Mm -hmm. I'm usually I like using without the box. So think you don't without have the box. without the box, so that you don't have somewhere to go around with. If you think without the, with, without the box mm. or within the box or outside the box, meaning that you have some circumference to go around. Without the box, you'll go far. Yeah. Great. That is some great inspiration for young people out there. And uh, for people who would like to start up new businesses and maybe have this fear, because I'm thinking you also had some fears somewhere, somehow, and uh, getting funds, of course, is not always an easy thing. Mm -hmm. um, how long did you save and how much did you need to start your business? And what would you like to tell the young, small and medium enterprise uh, business people out there? Um. I, I saved for like um, two years. Mm. The much I saved was less because my, okay, what I had uh, calculated for me to start up was around half a million. But what I reached is uh, was 125K. So that's only uh, catered for my, my machineries. It didn't cater for my inventories. So uh, you, need the, you need to start small. Mm -hmm. mm and you will grow with that so uh trying as much as you you are doing you are starting small and all that you try to limit your cost mm -hmm. you put bring down your cost of mini your cost of production and all that and you'll grow slowly by slowly mm, some people try to go high at the start uh that one it doesn't work that much if you don't have that capital and all that even if you have the capital and all that mm -hmm. if you start it high it will be very hard to keep it that high. Right. So someone is saying, uh, have you, th someone is asking here, have you thought about patenting? Uh, do you know much about patents? I have done, a, I have thought about patenting. Mm -hmm. mm. The problem I had with patenting was that uh, I went too, I went too late. Uh, when I asked about patenting is that uh, before you do patenting, you just, you know you ought not to have sold anything mm. or not to have advertised or all that so uh i did sell so sell sell before i go to patenting 
Did you think about going to the bank to get a loan, or have you thought about it at one point? Have, have you even it. done it? I have done it. I've done that. Mm. But what they, they, look, they look for collateral, in which I don't have a land or a mini logbook, which I don't have. So that one is, is out of question. So most of my uh, capital mm. and uh, what I usually add up is all from my savings. Okay. Uh, there's someone here who is saying, uh, okay, let me just get to this. Um, someone is saying, please tell Ojuang to give me his contact. I would like him to talk to our students. And if he is willing, he can be one of our incubatees if he needs to be. This is Margaret Muga from KTTC uh, Entrepreneurship Department. So there we go. Uh, you're already getting offers to speak to students about innovation and creativity and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone else here is appreciating and saying mind-blowing ad. Please tell the man to patent the product before some Indian <laughs> <laughs> replicates mm -hmm. it. So there we go. You need to seriously think about patenting. Um, yeah, I'll do this. That. Yeah. yeah, and how soon do you think you're going to do that uh, patenting take like a like an year mm. uh, for you to get the patent and all that so i think i'll start doing that uh, from next week what does the future look like for you uh for me the preacher the future looks bright um, because at least right now i can get like i can't stay a month without an order i can't stay a month a week without an order so it's all busy week so like some like right now this week i'm feel, i'm really booked up mm -hmm. so like mm, i have a lot to do um, and i think everything will be good yeah do you think of expanding your business yeah i'm really thinking of expanding but what i'm having for now is that i'm looking for a showroom because many people my place is so hard to find out mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, because I, I actually don't remember eh, what you said about because, the location. Yeah, you can get it to the place mm -hmm. and come to Moda, but you'll not find me because I'm on the top of a building. So people come and drive there, mm. but you'll never find me. So uh, it's very hard to find me. So what I'm, I'm trying to look for is a, a showroom where after making them, I can go display there. So who are your key uh, clients right now? My key clients are uh, some of the hotels, mm. um, uh, homes, yeah. And are there any challenges that you face today uh, in your line of business, aside from the competition that you get from, you know, different kinds of, of businesses out there? In most of my challenges is marketing. Uh, because I do marketing myself. Mm. Uh, sometimes back I employed, I employed some salesmen mm -hmm. and ladies but it was hectic for them so they dropped out so i decided to do it myself mm, so between i wake up so early around six and sleep so late around one so during that uh, that the, this time is when i do my marketing i do most of my marketing on facebook so mm, but you have a facebook page profile i have a pa facebook page mm -hmm. where i get all my items uh, the new ones. What probably. is that Facebook page? Um, it is fa uh, OJ's Designs. OJ's Designs. OJ's Designs. OJ's Designs. O -J -E -Y -S yeah. Designs Limited. Okay. Because yeah. there's a lot of people who are asking for your uh, contacts as well uh, via the SMS line. And mm -hmm. if you need them, you can visit his Facebook page that is OJ's Designs and you'll be able to get his contacts and how exactly you can get in touch with him or even visit uh, his workshop. And maybe he, you take pictures and, and post them on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, I take pictures and post them on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that I've done is on Facebook. Yeah. How affordable are these products? Uh, my products are affordable depending on how you look at it. Mm. Yeah. If you want something that is unique, you have to spend a little. If you want something that is durable, you have to spend a little. Okay, so for vision. instance, this, this table we're having here on, on the set, how much would it go for? Okay, this table on the set will go for 13500 13500 Yeah. Okay, what about the, the bus tool? The bus tool will go for around 10000 
Okay. All right. Uh, for now, we'll now have your final remarks and see what you're saying out there to all the Kenyans, the young Kenyans in particular, the very youthful Kenyans, uh, whom you are encouraging to think without a box. What would you like to say to them as we wind up? Uh, what I'd like to say to them is that uh, you should never give up on a passion. If you have a passion to do something, go for it. Uh, Lacking, lacking education, if you drop out of education in your school and all that, that's not the end of the world for you. Mm. You should try to keep up from drugs and all that and look for something to do for yourself because uh, it doesn't help to just stay and do nothing. Mm. Mm. Because it, at the end of everything, you have to go somewhere and look for something. Yeah. If, you can't do, if you don't get an employment, look for somewhere to do something to do even if it's a business even if it's farming and all that you try it you'll make it and and you are just the justification that you can make it if you choose to That's right. and uh, you know focus and think straight so well there are a number of sms's that i can't go through but most of them are people asking for your contacts people asking how to get in touch with you and people asking you to patent the product i, I think the next time i i, I give you a call mm -hmm. you should actually be telling me news of i already did that well, speaking to us in studio this morning is Martin Ojuang, and it was such an honor having you in studio so this morning. Uh, we wish you all the best with your business Thank and you. hoping that you can get the most out of it and, uh, you know, provide employment for a whole lot more Kenyans out there. Okay. Uh, he is the proprietor for OJ's Furniture or OJ's Designs, and you can find him on Facebook as well in case you want to get in touch with him. And uh, in case you would like his phone number, all you have to do is email us or reach our Facebook page KTN Morning Express and we'll be able to share his contacts with you and how exactly to get to his workshop or even to get to his designs. I'm Joy Doreen Bira. Tweet me at Joy Doreen Bira or tweet James Smart at James Smart and at KTN Kenya. For now we'll say have a blessed day and God bless you. This is nice.